And we're going to continue in our series on the through the Bible. And we're looking now today at the fall, Genesis chapter 3. Now, let's, before we get into that, let's do a, a brief overview of what we've discussed so far. So, there are different dispensations. The first dispensation is... Well done! <laughs> so there, isn't it? The second dispensation is... Oh, just before that one, that's the third. What's the second one? Conscience. conscience. Number two is conscience. Yeah. The fall to the flood. Then it is... Human God. Human God. Hey, hey, hold the ball. What is it? Human government. Human government, that's it. Human government. What's the one after human government? Uh, the prophets. Yeah, which one? The government, human government. I know. Uh, the, I think it's the prophets, or the law. Okay, but just before the law. Promise. Promise. Abraham. Abraham. Okay. Okay. The prophet Abraham. Abraham to his friend Sinai. The next one? The law. The law. Okay, which is Mount Sinai to Mount Calvary. And then the next one? Grace. grace. Okay, for the disposition of grace, Pente which is Pentecost to Christ's second coming. Okay, so the church began with Christ, but, the, 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 but this dispensation began with Pentecost. And then the final dispensation, uh, before I suppose, the Bible talks about the dispensation of the fullness of times, but, but, but what's the final dispensation we call it? Day of the Lord. Oh, no, that's Well, it's, it's similar. Okay. The last one? Oh, All those things. It's like it, it includes the day of the Lord. Kingdom. 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 Yes, the second coming, which is the day of the Lord to the great white throne of judgment. Okay, excellent. All right. So, and let's talk about what we talked about last week again. So, from the creationist review, from the creation to the fall, we I see a young earth from the book of Genesis. And the Bible dates at about 6,000 to 10,000 uh, years old, depending on the completeness of genealogies. So if the genealogies are complete, if Archbishop Bishop Usher dates the earth at 4004 BC, yes? Is, 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 this looks okay to me, is it okay guys? It is okay. <laughs> Just clean your glasses. You know, it's terrible. I'm looking, to say that, absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking at my glasses and I'm trying to, I'm looking at the screen and saying, this screen is out of focus. I'm looking at my laptop, my laptop's out of focus. So, anyway, <laughs> this looks fine. My laptop is out of focus. What's that all about? All right. Um, anyway, so somewhere between 6,000 and 10,000. I am one of those people, I don't believe the genealogies are complete. I, I think it, it, it says, with such and such begat such and such, it sort of skips several generations. So it's hard to, to exactly date the earth, but it's a, somewhere between six and 10,000 years, okay? Creation took six initial days, Exodus chapter 20, and then creation was spoken into existence, and God said, and God said, and God said. And all of creation was very good. The evening and the morning was the first day, the fourth day, the second, the fifth day, the sixth day, and it was good. Genesis 1, 31. There was no sin, no death, no decay, no fossils. There was no fossil record until death. So there was no fossil record until Genesis chapter 3, okay? So, and really there wasn't really a fossil record because the things wouldn't fossilized that quickly until a worldwide flood. So the fossils are thousand years old, not millions of years old. We can all see the fossil record. We all believe it's there. We can all see different layers in the fossil record. We reject the millions and millions of years of, you know, millions and millions of years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. Don't believe that. The Bible talks about dinosaurs. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a long time. It was all good. Now, the first man, Man is distinct from the rest of creation. Adam was the first man, Eve was the first woman, and they formed the first family, as the Bible says. And so therefore we get the first marriage, and it is defined by the scriptures, not by this country, not by our constitution, but by the scriptures of the union between the first man and the first woman, and that made the precedent for marriage. Marriage is one man and one woman for life. life. Okay. And it was one man and one woman, like we said already. Jesus hearkened back to it in Genesis chapter 19 when confronted by the Pharisees. Again, this is what we talked about last week. Then we also talked about the mandate and the Edenic covenant. Okay, the Edenic covenant was the dominion mandate that man was basically to replenish the earth and take care of things. The garden duties was in the Edenic covenant to take care of the garden and if not eat the forbidden fruit. Now, what happened? Man had not yet sinned, he was innocent. But what happened? That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 in our Bibles. Genesis chapter 3. 
Genesis chapter 3, looking at verse 1 to verse 7. I'll read the seven verses and I'll ask for people to read after this, okay? Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the food thereof, and did eat, and gave also to, unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this time. We can get into the scriptures. We pray you be with the children as they practice for their Christmas program. May they have a wonderful practice, but I pray you meet with us this evening. <coughs> Excuse me, I pray your Holy Spirit will have absolute freedom in our lives. And I pray we will learn from the scriptures and be convinced by your word, not by society around us. We are a holy people. We're a chosen nation, a chosen generation, your word says, and we're sanctified by you. Help us get our values and our, 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 our directions from you, not from the world around us, God. I pray for anyone who's still on their way, give them safe since they travel. And I pray we'd have a good time in your work tonight. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so, so we are in, <coughs> we just read Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. And we read about the temptation. Genesis 3, verse 1 to 7 um, records the temptation of the serpent, okay? Um, who is the serpent? The devil or Satan, okay? Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 tells us that. We won't look there at the moment. Now, when they were tempted, we read about it. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 14. And uh, we'll keep a marker there in Genesis 3 because we might get back there. We'll see. 1 Timothy chapter 2 in our Bibles. First Timothy chapter two. Are we turn this on? We get some extra sound to help. First Timothy chapter two. Let me turn on the sound. Thank you so much. First Timothy chapter two, <clears throat> looking at verse thirteen and verse fourteen. Who wants to read those verses for me, please? And Adam was first called, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. The woman being deceived was in temptation. Okay. So there was a difference in Adam's and and Eve's respective sins. What was the difference? Eve was what? Eve was deceived. Adam was not. What was he not? Not deceived. That's really important. Eve was deceived. She was lured in. But Adam knew exactly what he was doing. That's really important. Okay? Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 now. Okay? Genesis chapter 3. I'm not going to comment on that. I could, there's so many things I could comment on. I don't have to keep on moving, okay? But we will comment on some things, okay? Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 to 13. Let's grab a verse, whoever... Who, somebody who wants to read all those verses, verse 8 to 13. Anybody want to read all those verses? 8 to 13, please. <clears throat> Very sure of giving back. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee, that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast known? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. Okay, thank you. So, to whom did God speak first? Adam. Adam. Why did God speak to Adam first? It's really important. He was the federal head of all mankind. Okay? Why else did God speak to Adam? That's true. That's really important. But why else did God speak to Adam? The Bible says he sinned. He sinned. He was held accountable. Why was Adam held accountable? Well, God gave him a commandment. 
Right. Right. That's true. He was given the correct. He was. He was given the, the command directly, not Eve. Okay. Why else? And that's true. This is very important. What did we say already about the difference between Adam and Eve? Adam wasn't deceived. He wasn't deceived. So what should he have done? Afterwards, or before? Oh, before the before the before the before he sinned. Should have avoided hanging around that tree. Yeah, he should have stood in the way. Yeah. Didn't protect Eve. It's really important, isn't it? That's really important. So he was not deceived. So God spoke to Adam. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Can I just give out some scriptures here? First Corinthians 15, verse 1, 21 and 22. 15, Brother well, Paul. Um, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Okay, Julie. And we'll all turn to Genesis in a minute. Um, Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 5. Psalm 51, verse 5. Psalm 51, uh, uh, Mary. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Ephesians 2, verse 1. Ephesians, okay, Debbie. Okay, perfect. That'll do for the moment. Okay. Now. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21 to 22. Can you hear that, please? Paul says, By one man prophet fear dead, and by man fear also the resurrection of the dead. And for as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man is not order. Christ the first fruit, after all they that are Christ at his coming, then come at the end, when they shall deliver up the kingdom, and become a living to fire. Okay, you, you can stop there. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, so who does God hold accountable for sin according to verse 21? For since by one man. man came death, came man also the resurrection of the dead. That's verse 21, right? So God holds Adam responsible, okay? And uh, God holds man responsible for sin entering into the human race. Under the dispensation of innocence, Adam and Eve fail to obey the one prohibition given them, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Adam was held responsible for that. So we see the failure of man here. The dispensation of innocence ended with the failure of Adam and Eve when they rebelled against God's clear revelation and partook of the forbidden fruit. This dispensation proved even uh, proved that even in an ideal environment, man is incapable of pleasing God on his own. In an ideal environment, man is incapable of pleasing God on his own. Now, let's talk about sin for a minute, okay? Let's see now. So, um, let me just see. I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so sin entered into the world here, okay? Now, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Who did I give that to you? So the Bible tells us in Romans 5.12 that sin entered into the world. God used Adam as responsible for sin's entrance into the world because he was the head of the human race. That was mentioned already. Appreciate that. Before Eve was created, Adam, Adam was given the Edenic covenant. That was Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. God put him in the garden, told him to dress it, to keep it, not to eat of the fruit, all that stuff. I think we said that already. He was responsible for Eve as well as himself. That's really important. So there is a theme, I think it's really interesting, that Satan is tearing down the structure of the home. And um, before, uh, hundreds of years ago, what was the family structure in Ireland and across the world? Married parents. Okay, but married, keep going. Married parents, what else? Man is in charge. Man was in charge. Was in charge. So then Satan comes in with the lie of equality. Now, woman was never not equal with man. It's always been the case. But it was, it was under the guise of equality, but really what it was was role reversal. And so man is supposed to be the one who's responsible for his home, he's responsible for his spirit. I've come across so many people, and they always take pride in, well, she is, she is the spiritual keeper of our home. I mean, I don't mean this in a bad way, but I'd be ashamed to say that to somebody else, well, my wife is the one that is the spiritual keeper of my home. 
I want to take on my responsibility. Amen, men? Amen. I want to take on the spiritual responsibility of my, of my... It's not my wife's job to be a spiritual keeper of my home, when it's my job to be a spiritual keeper of my home. And again, that's Satan tearing down the structure of the family in our society and man getting sucked into the lie of society. Does that make sense? That's really, really important. So man was responsible for Eve as well as himself. And he was present when Eve was tempted and he failed his responsibility to intervene. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Look what it says here, your Bibles are open there. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of it, of the fruit thereof, and she did eat, and gave also unto her, her husband, what to say, the last two, next two words. Before that, that before that. The last two words. And he gave... <laughs> I can read it again, you missed me, you missed me, stop, okay, do it again. Okay, she took of the fruit thereof and, and, and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. with her. He was there all the time. That's the whole point. I had a big theological discussion with another preacher who couldn't agree. And he said he had his board of directors with him. You know, there's other people in the office. And he said, no, we all agree that he wasn't there. I said, but the Bible says he was there. And I was a guest at his church or whatever at, at, at the occasion. And I used to preach and I'd already had a, a, a difference of opinion with him. He went off to do something. And I, and I lauded on the guy, the great man of God, loved the guy, and just said, uh, this is what the Bible says. <laughs> just preach the Bible, you know, because that's what it says. It says she was there. It says he was there. The husband with her. Adam was there when Eve sinned. Okay? It's really important. So, now, um, because of that, all Adam and Eve's offspring will be born with sin. Does anybody know what Psalm 51 verse 5 says? Yes. I was shaping in iniquity. David was saying that. Exactly. So all would be dead in sin. Ephesians 2 1. Who did I give that to? So we're born with sin. We're dead, born dead. I, I put it this way we're born, we're still born. Still born with sin. Okay? And Romans 5 verse 12 also tells us the end. Well, tells us that the entrance of sin into the world brought its consequences, death, along with it. Adam and Eve began to experience the aging process. It's rough, isn't it? I mean, I'm still 20. I still do all the stuff I do at 20. I haven't aged a bit. And somebody came to me the other day, I won't say who it was, and says, you're an old man. I don't feel like an old man. But when I look in the mirror, I see an older man. <laughs> when I look, at, I look at photographs. I say, "Who is that?" I saw a video. It was really funny, and uh, there was this granddaughter with her granddad, and she was showing showing a, a selfie with the uh, with her phone. He says, "Who's that ugly guy in the phone?" It was just terrible, funny. He was like, "That, that's get that ugly guy out of that." It just ended up being really funny. But the point is, when you get older and older and older, you age and age and age because of sin, because of death. Is coming. Death is coming for all of us, okay? And uh, it is sobering, but it's reality. Adam and Eve brought the experience of the aging process, which would ultimately lead to physical death. Death would also affect their soul, their mind, and their spirit. They both experienced immediate, immediate death of their spirits, okay? Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. What does Genesis 2, 15 say? Who wants to read that for me? Genesis 2, 15. No, wrong verse. Verse 18. No, it's not verse 18. <laughs> verse 17. I put the wrong reference. So I'm trying to find the right reference. Genesis. Say you were an old man or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Will I read Genesis 2 17? Then? Please. But of the tree of, no of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. In the day you eat of it, God said. But Adam and Eve ate of the fruit. And then they hid themselves and they sewed ap aprons and all that type of stuff. The Bible says, in the day they eat it thereof. Now, what did God mean when he said, a day, the day? It means exactly what he says. They died immediately. They didn't die spiritually, though, or physically, should I say. They died what? Spiritually. Now, we don't need to turn there. But that's why Jesus would explain to Nicodemus the need for a second birth. John, John chapter 3. We know the verses so well. John chapter 3, verse 7. Very, very, I say unto thee, ye must, must be born, born again. again, because we're spiritually dead. 
So finally, Romans 5.12 tells us that death passed upon all men. By order of creation, all of Adam's offspring inherit his sinful fallen nature. Sin is passed through the bloodline. This is really important as well, by the way. Sin is passed through the bloodline of man. So if a woman can give birth to a child without men, that child will be born without sin. That's true. Um, I, you see these videos I, I, on, on YouTube or whatever, and, and they'll say, they'll say, do you need, do we meet men? And you see these families, no, we don't need men. Men have no absolute no value. Oh, it's like, give me a break. You know, uh, of course we need men because men are part of the production process for human beings, right? We need men just as much as we need women. We need women just as much as we need men. And tearing down society and tearing down people accomplishes no good, amen? We need men. You can't have children without men. Now I know they could use IVF and all that type of stuff, but there's still a man involved. Do you with me here? There's only one human born person, human being, who was born into this world where no man was involved, and that is Amen. Jesus Christ. And that is the only person who will ever be born into this world without a man involved. And he was born of a virgin Mary, and that is another day's conversation. But brethren, that was that's really important. Because sin comes through the bloodline of man and through the seed of the man, therefore salvation has to come through the seed of what? The woman. Genesis 3.15. Let's go to Genesis 3.15. Who wants to read that? Genesis 3.15. This is Proto-Evangelium in Latin, the first gospel. Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head. And now shall bruise his heel. So here is the Lord saying, and we're going to discuss this now in a minute, but the Lord is saying that salvation would come through the seed of the woman, not the seed of the man. Seed of the man is sinful. Seed of the man has a bloodline of sin. Okay? So the salvation has to come through the seed of the woman. Okay? Now, we're going to get to that in a little bit. Okay, so sin. Sin is defined in different ways. Uh, how are we doing for time? We'll do it quickly. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Raise your hand. Ephesians 5, 6. So, Go ahead. The, man, the man passes on his sin nature. But my kids don't have their mother's sin nature. They have my sin nature. Yeah. They don't have any of their mother's sin nature. The sin, it, 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 it comes through the man. <laughs> I don't want to get myself into trouble. <laughs> Let's move on, but yes, theologically, that is correct, okay? Yeah, Ephesians 5, 6. Scientifically, that is not so correct, because the gene from the whole parents make a child, make an individual at school. Which gene carries us in, then? Oh, I don't know the talk. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I'm not talking about genetics, I'm talking about Bible. This is theology. I am saying scientifically, or medically, yeah. that's what we are talking about. But you can't, you can't, you can't identify sin in genomes, you know. No, physically they always look alike. Maybe some child may resemble the mother, may resemble the father. It's mixed. Yeah. So two of us are mixed. And I agree. So we get our characteristics from both parents yeah. and from grandparents, so and all the genetic. Information comes through all those generations and the permutations and combinations and all those pairs of chromosomes and everything else that fits in all together. But the point is that sin only comes through men. So the Bible says. Okay. I don't disagree. I just. It's just how it's worded. <laughs> okay, would somebody like to reword this in such a way that it makes more sense? Oh my goodness, you want us to improve on the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> No, of course not. Theological mess. I'm going to join the Protestants. Oh, no, please. <laughs> Judy, do you see you have a question? I, I, was, I was just saying, but they're equally sinful. Yeah, yeah. Because you got your sin nature from your dad. Yeah. Go yeah. home and say, thanks, dad. I was just going to say, but my sin nature is from my dad. Correct. Not from my mother. We all have a sin, have sin nature from my father. But it comes from the man. But the hereditary sin nature is inherited from the dad, not from the mother. That's where we inherit our sins. Well, theologically, theologically. It goes back to Adam. It goes back to Adam. It, goes, it, it, it takes Adam. It, it takes a direct line back to Adam. But right. every baby born after that is through yes. a woman, and they have both the sin nature. And any woman 
ever born could have been the mother of Jesus. It could have been chosen by the Lord. Yeah. Could, yeah, I mean, as a Jew, of course, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Ruth became a Jew, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair yeah. point. Fair point. I'll accept that. I, I mean, fair this point. is just uh, theological. Yeah, no, absolutely. Philosophy, but okay, but well, we'll get to that in a minute because we have to keep on moving. Okay, so Ephesians 5 6. Who wants to raise their hand for that? Ephesians 5 6. Okay, Mary. Okay, Romans 1 27. Romans 1 27. Romans 1 27. Romans 1, bro, Brandon. Okay, Debbie, 2 Thessalonians 2 7. 2 Thessalonians 2 7. Uh, Romans 3 23. Who wants to quote that? Okay, but the Paul, you can quote that. 1 John 3 4. 1 John 3 4. I'll get that one. Ephesians 2 1. Ephesians 2 1. Ephesians 2 1. Um, Judy. Romans 11 32. Romans 11 32. Jenny. And Romans 3 5. Romans 3 5. Romans 3 5. Romans 3 5. Can you get Romans 3 5? I get you no choice. Okay, this is called conscription. Okay, so uh, so sin sin can be defined in different ways. It can be defined as disobedience. Ephesians five twenty six. Ephesians five verse six. I'm sorry. Yeah, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So the word disobedience there means obstinacy. They're obstinate. Okay. Uh, Romans one twenty seven. It could be called error. Romans one twenty seven. Likewise, also the men be the natural use of the woman, burden her lust, one toward another. Men is the name working that which is unseemly to receive it into themselves that recompense of their error which was finished. So their error, their sin, okay, is a forsaking of the right path. Okay, it's also called iniquity. Second Thessalonians two verse seven. Iniquity means lawless, okay, lawlessness, okay. Sin, Romans 3, 23, 4. Honor, sin, and come short of the glory of God. Okay, that's called sin, missing to mark. Sin means to miss the mark. You're aiming for the, the bullseye, you miss. Sin means to miss the mark. It also means transgression. First John chapter 3, verse 4 says, sin is the transgression of the law, okay. It's also called trespass, Ephesians 2, verse 1. So the word trespass means a false step, okay? These are different synonyms for sin, disobedience, error, iniquity, sin, transgression, trespass, unbelief, Romans 11, verse 32. For God hath included them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Okay, so unbelief is a failure to accept revealed truth. And then the final uh, word we're going to use to, to uh, again, to express sin is unrighteousness. Romans chapter 3, verse 5. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who take vengeance for speaking? So unrighteousness means wrongdoing, okay? So sin can be also called foolishness, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. Carnality, Romans chapter 7, verse 4, where Paul says, I'm carnal, sold under sin. And uh, Romans 7, verse 14, slavery. And again, James chapter 4, verse 17, neglect. Okay, so different synonyms for sin. Okay, so that all came into this world through Adam, Adam's sin, so through Adam and Eve. Okay, now, then there was a promise. Praise the Lord. That's what Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and verse 15. God gives a promise of deliverance. It's Genesis 3, verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, that are cursed above all cattle. So Satan had brought sin into the world, if you like, by tempting Eve. Eve uh, was deceived. Adam was there, didn't stop it. Adam was held accountable. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. So the Lord God is speaking to the serpent. Who's the serpent? The Satan. Satan. Right, good. Okay? It's not good, but um, the answer is correct. Okay? So enmity. The Bible says in verse 15, thou, I, I will put enmity. What does enmity mean? Separation. Separation. Dispute. 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 Yeah. It's even stronger than that. War. War. Hostility. Really? 
Hatred. Hatred. Yeah, hatred, hostility. It means an intense dislike to the point of opposition. Satan is called our adversary. Does anybody know where in the Bible where, where Satan is called our adversary? Right, First Peter 5 8. You are correct. First Peter 5 8. Be sober, be village, vigilant for our adversary to the devil. He's, Satan is in opposition to us. I had a great time talking to the Orient of today, and uh, we were talking about truth. John chapter 8. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay? So, the reason why those lads I said, the reason why you're in here. And I thank God you're here going through rehabilitation is because you gave into lies, you were deceived, you, 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 you followed lies. And Satan is our adversary, he's against us. And any, he, he is anyone who is against truth is against the Lord. And, and Satan is our adversary, he's against us, he's against truth. And the truth will set us free, but the, but the error will bring us into bondage. We had a long time talking about that. It had been a very, very good conversation. But Satan is the king of, of, of or should I say, the, the great adversary. He is our great enemy. He is the greatest opposition there is to God. But the Lord, knowing all these things, pr made promises. He, first of all, there are two seeds. The Bible says in verse 15, I'll put enmity between the woman, between thee and the woman, between what to say? Thy seed. Thy seed and Her seed. Her seed. So those are two seeds. The one is the offspring of? His mind. This is really important now. This is theologically important. One is the offspring of? The devil. The devil. It's going to be the Antichrist. And the other is the offspring of? Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, 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 you're, you're, you're giving it away. <laughs> That's the answer. But so before that, between the thee and the woman. Demand. It's, the, it's not the seed of the man, it's the seed of the woman. So there's two seeds, the seed uh, of the serpent and the seed of the woman. That's really, really important because Christ did not have the bloodline of the man. He's the seed of the woman. Where does the, where does, where does the sin follow? Whose bloodline does it come through? Adam sinned by one man sin entered into the world. So salvation couldn't come through the bloodline of man. It had to come through the bloodline of the woman. Couldn't come through the seed of man. Had to come through the seed of the woman. You with me here this, 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 this evening? Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 really clearly comes out that the Messiah had to come through the woman. And that's why all Israel was constantly looking who is going to give birth to the Messiah. Because they were waiting for the seed of the woman. They didn't understand all the theology of it. But they knew that a woman had to give, give birth to the Messiah. Okay. So, there are two seeds. There are also two wounds. Okay. Look at verse 15. What's it say in verse 15? It shall bruise thy head. So the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. And thou shalt bruise his heel. And, and so a bruise of the head. Is that a deadly injury or a temporary injury? Deadly. A bruise of the heel is that a deadly injury or temporary? Yes. Temporary. That's really important. Verse 15 is the important verse. God, by pronouncing this verse, uh, this curse, should I say, upon the serpent and Satan, is promoting that someday, promising someday, read the words, that, that there, there would come through the seed of the woman one who would deliver a fatal blow to Satan. Now, is Satan smart? Yes. Did he realize when, when God made a promise about his head being beaten, do you think he was looking out for the seed of the woman to destroy it? Yeah. So we're going to follow, there's a theme here to follow through, brethren. Okay? All human offspring are born to the seed of man. The only way this promise could be kept is for the one to be born of a virgin woman without the seed of a man. This promise given immediately after Adam and Eve plunged the human family into sin, looked ahead to the virgin birth of Jesus Christ in 4,000 years later. Okay. Furthermore, Satan, meaning opponent or adversary, would make his mission, it is mission to destroy the seed of the woman. Now, think about it. Where's the first place where you can think that Satan tried to destroy the seed of the woman? Think about it. Murders. Even before that. You're right, but even before Herod. Where did Satan try to destroy the seed of the woman? Who said it's no real to accept And I'm just remembering one night, it's not my nose, but I'm remembering. Abel. 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 Abel.
Satan didn't know. He didn't understand the theology. He just knew through the seed of the woman, someone was going to bruise him. He saw Abel and Cain. He said, Cain hates God. No, no threat to me. Abel loved the Lord. And so Satan thought maybe this could be the seed of the woman. And he destroyed Abel, didn't he? After Abel, where else was the seed of the woman? Where, where did Satan go after the seed of the woman after that? Before that? Yeah. You're right, you're right. You're, I mean, you're thinking of lots of these. Okay, maybe even before that. Uh, yeah, and so go from seven or eight, nine generations. What happened next? When Satan went out to destroy the seed of the woman, what did he do? This is really important because we're not even to have his devices. When we, if you don't learn from history, you're going to make, repeat mm -hmm. history, right? Yes. Genesis, yes, Genesis chapter 6. Exactly. Just before the flood, the antediluvians, the pre flood people, were wicked. And the thoughts and the imaginations of their heart were continually evil. So Satan was trying to wipe out any righteous seed or anything that could, good could come out of the woman. Are you with me here? He was trying to corrupt the whole human race. And he did it again with the Midianites in Numbers chapter 25 when he, 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 he wanted. Um, Balaam to curse Israel and Balaam wasn't able to curse Israel so he said well, we'll wipe them out by corrupting them through all sorts of idolatry and perversion. Numbers chapter 25 Baal Peor, do you remember reading about that? So there's, oh there's so many times Satan's trying to destroy this evil woman. Yes? Do you think uh, we have an influence then with Ishmael? Yeah I'd say that's very possibly that okay. because in Isaac shall thy seed Called. Yeah, absolutely. Ishmael could have been a satanic device to try and thwart God's plan. Where Abraham, I'll be satisfied with Ishmael, I'll just accept that. You know, could be, you know, you never know. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I've got to believe anything that would thwart God's plan. Anything. Okay, um, another one I have is the decree of Haman to destroy the Jews. Okay, and the madness of Herod. Why is Satan going after Israel today? By the way, the seed of the woman has been born, the Messiah has come. Why is Satan still going after Israel? God's yeah, because God shows him. And he's angry, isn't he? He hates them. Because he knows that through their seed is his destruction. He's just mad at Israel. He would love all. Satan is the biggest anti Semitic person in the universe because he knows that through the seed of, 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 um, of, of the Semites, if you like, the Jews. Up to the Hebrews that he's going to be destroyed somehow. Okay, now, so, and let's move on. Verse 15 is also the foundation of the second biblical covenant. So the first biblical covenant is called, what's that called? Do you remember? In, during the period of innocence. What was the first biblical covenant called? Do you remember? Abraham, the, uh, no, Adam. Edenic. Edenic. Eden, 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 Edenic covenant. The second covenant here now is the Adamic covenant. And in it, verse 16 to 19, God declares to Adam what life will be like because of sin. Verse 16 to 19, I'll read it quickly. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I command thee, saying that thou shalt not eat it, cursed is the ground of thy sake. For thy sake, in sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shalt thou bring, shall it bring forth to thee, and there thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it thou was taken, for dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt, uh, shalt thou return. But I, I put verse 15 in there, I don't know why the notes say verse 16, but verse 15 is the foundation to it. Oh yeah, I misread my notes, okay. Verse 15 is the foundation, because that's the, that's the covenant. But verse 16 and 19 is also what's going to happen during that covenant, okay? Difficulty, hardship because of sin, okay? And these conditions continue to this day. Women struggle to have to give birth to children. And sadly, sometimes women die giving birth to children. Man struggles to be profitable in his farming, in his horticulture, okay? And work is hard, okay? And it doesn't always bring forth fruit. Any questions? Yes. So, so just to clarify, the Edenic, Eden, Eden, Edenic, Edenic covenant was the promise of life in the 
Tree of Life, right? And, and well, the Tree of Life wasn't offered in that, no. No, sorry, but what was, to, to clarify between the Edenic, Edenic and Eden, the Adamic. The, the, okay, the Edenic in Eden, God was, it was given directly to Adam, okay? And the covenant was to, to, to fill the earth, you know, to, to take care of the tree of, of, of uh, uh, the, the, the trees in the garden and to not eat of the fruit of the not the tree of the knowledge of good and life. That was the Edenic covenant. Is it creation mandate in that then? Um, yes, I think it is, isn't it? You just took I think it is. Is that included in that? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I believe so. Unless I'm getting mixed up with... Um, yeah, that that is the three notes. I think that the um, I think I think that yeah, that it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. Yeah. So yes. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Number one, uh, that's uh, it came, who are the seed? That is seed. Who are the seed of the devil? Okay. Well, the seed of the devil really is going to be it's Satan himself, but also during the tribulation period, um, there's going to be the the antichrist. The false prophet and the beast, just like the satanic trinity. Okay, so they they are all like the seed of the devil. They're the offshoots, but but they're going to be destroyed. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And Satan themselves will be destroyed. Which is the Who are the seed of? Oh, well, this, this. You know, we are because uh, it was through Adam's sin and then. Yeah, no, there's not, there's not that. There's, no, that. There, there, no, there's not. There's okay. nothing. It is the same. Okay, the okay, second question. Um, are we not uh, the born again Christian? I think not the what's called spiritual Israel, okay? Because in this case, it's not only Israel that they pass, but anybody that is born again Christian, yeah. the northern part of Nigeria, the Christian there, yeah. or they have been attacked by the Muslim. Sorry, yeah. I'm going to make sure. Very much. And they report the affair of the yeah. Muslim. They hate Christian, Muslim hate Christian. Okay, so, so Brother Paul's making the point that, 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 that worse, every born again Christian is spiritual Israel. There's a physical Israel that where all the promises are for, you know, and uh, we could go into that, we don't have the time to do that, but, but there's a physical Israel that, that, that God has made promises to. But also we are the seed of Abraham through the promises because we also inherit those promises and we've been grafted into the vine. So, so Satan hates Christians as well. Fair point. Absolutely. That's the Paul's point. Yes. Is Satan's seed is a spiritual seed only. Uh, spiritual seed or physical seed. Well, I, I would say the physical seed. Yes. Well, you have the comparison there in Genesis three fifteen. Yes. Was Cain the sort of physical seed? Was no. No. Satan is, is um, Cain wasn't a seed, but 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 um, but but Satan is is a physical person who man who will manif manifest himself. He's he's spiritual because we can't see him. But he manifests himself physically at times. But he will, during the tribulation period, there will be the physical manifestation of Satan in the beast, the false prophet, and the antichrist. So that would say that that's physical. Yeah, but the, the, the antichrist is a physical human being. Correct. Right. But they're the satanic trinity. But it's like the spiritually, spiritually. Yeah. Reality. Yeah, it's so hard to. <laughs> basically, devil filled people, but it's Satan in so them, yeah. The seed of God, it's all. It, it's it's like it's like the Antichrist. There have been Antichrists that have come, like Antiochus Epiphanes, Hitler, you know, others who Judas Iscariot, you know, they've been Antichrists, you know, but 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 they're all pre preliminaries to the ultimate fulfillment of during the tribulation period. Yes. Um, interesting when the rapture happens and the Holy Spirit um, is removed, and um, so then. It's interesting because now Israel becomes spiritual as well because the Holy Spirit then works specifically with Israel during the second part of the tribulation. So then that kind of does put into physical spiritual yeah. and the Antichrist physical spiritual, doesn't it? That's why it's so hard to answer. Yeah, because it is, it is physical spiritual, you know, in a certain way. But but let's say but when we're talking about the seed of woman, seed of man, we're talking about physical people. Yeah. That, 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 like, yeah. that really is. But they can also be euphemistic for so much more. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we've seen that. Absolutely. Okay, so let's quickly um, uh, uh, bring this to an end. And this is great, great. I really appreciate all your input. So the Adamic covenant that is we've just read is actually verse fifteen to verse nineteen. That's my mistake. Um, since the Edenic covenant was has concluded, the second of the eight biblical covenants sets forth the conditions. Um, 
man would live under as a result of the fall. And we've already read them, but these include the curse upon the serpent. Uh, the curse upon the serpent, verse 15. Uh, the promise of a redeemer, verse 15. Thy seed and the seed of the woman. The changed condition of the woman. Uh, the changed condition of a woman. Maybe, I, maybe that's, not, that's not very good wording, but uh, anyway, difficult for women having childbirth. Basically what it is. And then the curse upon the earth and the resulting burdensome labor and sorrow for man. I mean, that's tough, okay? And then finally, in that, the physical death, okay? Verse 19, and in the sweat of thy brow, it says, thou shalt eat bread till thou return unto the ground. That's physical death, okay? So, because when, when God said this to Adam, nobody had died yet. That's why this was new. We read this, yeah, we're turning around, oh yeah, yeah, but Adam had never experienced that. Nobody had seen this. Eve had never seen, I don't know who died first. Let's guess Eve died first. Adam had never seen anyone die. Well, we know that, that Abel died. Of course, did Cain, did, did, did they see his body? That's another story. But, you know, look, death is, is a horrific thing, isn't it? Okay, so let's wrap this up then. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, Adam, made them, Adam and Eve made themselves fig leaves. Okay, they clothe themselves in self righteousness, self righteous clothing. Okay, man still does. Man still looks for a way to be right with God. I'll live a good life. I won't hurt anybody. And one guy said to me the other day, "This was interesting. I'm just gonna be happy." I said, "You mean I'm gonna live a good life?" No, no, not say that. So you don't want to live a good life. And he sort of laughed at that. You know, just be happy. So that's his modus operandi. That's interesting. But uh, the Lord responded by replacing man's self-righteousness with, with, with his righteousness, which would be skins. Blood had to be spilled. And uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden. Okay, Somebody read Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, please, as we bring this to a, a conclusion. Genesis 3, 24. So he drove, so he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden, <coughs> and the flaming sword, which turned every way to keep uh, the way of the tree of life. So there was a cherubim. Is that what it says? Yeah, there was a cherubim, yeah. and, a, and, and, a, and a flaming sword. And the writer of this notes uh, suggests that the flaming sword is no longer Jesus Christ Himself. I hadn't heard that before, but anyway, that was put out there. So uh, this possibly was a theophany or a Christophany. What is a theophany? Jesus before. That's a Christophany. Christ, the only the theophany. Pretty similar. God. God. Yeah. Go ahead. Before. The, the incarnation of Christ. Before. Yeah. So so God appearing in, 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 in on earth before the incarnation. Okay. So summary. Creation was the first, there was creation, then there was the first man, first woman, first family, God's terms, man's failure, God's judgment, and praise God, we end with God's mercy. Aren't you glad for the mercy of the Lord? I'm really glad about that. So we have lots of questions, lots of good stuff. Any any more questions? With regards to being presumptive, you know, it was supposed to point to God's love. Oh, that's a really interesting like, one. You know, like, Stay uh, I've never heard that before. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. Hmm. Never heard that before. That's a really interesting thought. No, it's just a thought of considering it before. Interesting thought. Maybe you should write a book about that. <laughs> <laughs> interesting thought. <laughs> let's, let's close the pair. Father, thank you so much.